Topping our Sunrise Smart Start, police are looking for a suspect after a vehicle crashed into a house late last night in Rochester. Officers responded to Norton Street around 1130. Here's what they saw. A car swerving off the road and crashing into a vacant house there. The occupants in that car fled on foot, we're told. The house had minor damage. If you have any information about this crash, you're being asked to call 911. Rochester police making an arrest in connection to a bank robbery from last month. Officers say 40-year-old Dwayne McDaniel was arrested over the weekend after a robbery at the Summit Federal Credit Union. This on East Main Street back on November 17th. McDaniel allegedly passed a note to the teller demanding money and then stole over $1,000. Police say McDaniel is on parole for a prior robbery conviction in 2019 and over 14 other criminal convictions. He is set to be arraigned later this morning. Also today, the U.S. Supreme Court will hear the biggest abortion case in a generation. It centers on a Mississippi law that bans the procedure after 15 weeks of pregnancy. Supporters of this measure are asking the justices to end the constitutional right to abortion. Opponents worry this could be the case and the court to do it. Joined by Washington correspondent Anna Wernicke with more on this this morning live in D.C. Anna, good morning. So what can we expect today? Good morning. Well, the decision today could overturn Roe v. Wade and nearly 50 years of legal precedent. And both sides say that they've been waiting for this day since Mississippi passed their law in 2018. Uh, Mississippi's only abortion clinic, the Jackson Women's Health Organization, uh, sued over that state law that prohibits abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy. They're arguing that the law is unconstitutional under Roe v. Wade. And Mississippi is asking the justices to get rid of that standard and allow states to set their own policy. Uh, so oral arguments are set to begin at 10 a.m., but we're not actually expected to have a ruling come down until June of next year. Anna, if the court were to overturn Roe v. Wade, what would be the impact on states and how immediate would the impact be? Well, if the justices do side with Mississippi, there's actually a total of 12 states that already have laws right now on the books that would automatically outlaw abortions once the Supreme Court does rule. But again, that ruling isn't expected to come down until uh, late spring or early summer of next year. We'll be looking for that then. In the meantime, we'll follow the justices today as well. Anna, thank you for the live update. Many conservative states have passed increasingly restrictive laws regulating abortion in recent years, including Texas, which passed a measure back in September. In other news, Chris Cuomo, CNN anchor and the brother of former New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, has been suspended by the network indefinitely. CNN says Cuomo's return will depend on a further review of documents that may reveal how he helped his brother when Andrew Cuomo was first facing accusations of sexual harassment. The network said transcripts released by New York Attorney General Tish James revealed Chris Cuomo had a greater involvement in his brother's case than originally reported. Having a look at uh, the forecast here on this first day of December, uh, we've got uh, a little bit of wind chill out there to go along with uh, slightly above average temperatures, right, James? Yeah, a little bit of a breeze there, uh, certainly. It makes it feel like the 20s, but still, uh, you know, not, not a bad bike ride because of the dry roads. We like that. Uh, no rain or snow showers coming down. And in fact, we are above freezing and will remain above freezing through this afternoon. You see it there, highs in the low 40s. We could be near 50 by uh, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, so uh, we'll uh, have that forecast the eight day and a bus stop forecast at the end of the show. Mark. All right, uh, James, uh, thank you. Time to check the roads again with our sunrise traffic. Uh, we mentioned it in our last update, an accident 390 north at the Rush Scottsville exit, exit 11. If you are coming north on 390 this morning, pack in some extra time. The rest of 390 you see here, a live view at the airport, 490, 590, up to speed at last check. To the latest now on COVID-19, local leaders placing Monroe County under a state of emergency for a second time yesterday amid a spike in new COVID cases and hospitalizations. County Executive Adam Bello says phase one will include face masks being required inside all county facilities, a work from home policy for county employees who can do so, and expanding rapid testing. Bello says there will not be a universal indoor mask mandate, but more changes could come if the numbers don't improve. We need to flatten the curve of hospitalizations now before the situation reverts to what we experienced last year. Social distancing, masking, limiting our gatherings and being cautious when traveling. Those things still matter. 
Well, officials with the University of Rochester Medical Center say unvaccinated people account for 60% of all COVID hospitalizations and 80% of all patients admitted to the ICU. FDA advisors voting to recommend emergency use authorization for an at-home COVID treatment. The drug manufacturer Merck says its pill reduces the risk of severe COVID in those who've contracted the virus by about 30%. If authorization is granted, the drug would be the first antiviral COVID treatment approved in the U.S. Merck says it will continue to gather data as the pill is more widely used. Health officials say the newly discovered Omicron variant has not been detected in the U.S. The CDC is monitoring travel from other nations after the strain was first discovered in South Africa. The Omicron variant has been confirmed in 20 countries, including the United Kingdom and Japan. Well, a Rochester man on parole after a manslaughter conviction was arrested yesterday in connection with a quadruple shooting that killed two people in September. Investigators say 27-year-old John Gordon shot four people outside a party on Driving Park Avenue. Two of the victims, 35-year-old Jimmy Jones and 23-year-old Sharif Clark, were killed. A man in his 30s also has life-altering injuries. The fourth victim, a woman in her 20s, was shot multiple times but survived. Gordon has been charged with multiple counts of murder, assault, and criminal possession of a weapon. He is set to be arraigned coming up this morning. Well, many schools and industries across the country are experiencing staffing shortages, especially when it comes to bus drivers. The Arca Monroe is feeling the pressure as well. Carmela Boykin live this morning with more on how the shortages are impacting the organization. Carmela, good morning. Good morning, Mark. Drivers for the Ark of Monroe serve as a way for individuals with developmental disabilities to get to and from their daily programs. Without drivers, many individuals aren't able to attend. This job is a big responsibility and includes making sure each individual pas passenger is transported safely. Driver and trainer Kathleen Sullivan says attending programs are incredibly important for people supported by the Ark. That's the biggest part of their life is their programs, their friends, their staff, and the socialization. We desperately need drivers, just like every other transportation um, agency or organization needs, we do too, because it's the only way that we're going to get our passengers to and from program. And although the job is a big responsibility, Sullivan says the job is rewarding as well. She says seeing her passengers each day brightens her day and that her passengers are like her family. In Rochester, Carmela Boykin, News 8. Mark. Carmela, thank you. The Ark Monroe asking anyone who is interested in positions to visit arkmonroe.org. Well, it was a record-setting rock of the day. The United Way of Greater Rochester announcing it raised over a million dollars for a second year in a row during the 11th annual Rock the Day event on Giving Tuesday. The final tally, $1,196,259. Over 9,000 donations were made. The money raised will support over 500 local organizations. All right, here's what uh, probably a lot of folks will be talking about at the water cooler this morning. Have you heard the news? The U.S. Senate has a new contender, TV personality Dr. Oz. Oz announcing he will run as a Republican in Pennsylvania, vying for the seat of retiring GOP Senator Pat Toomey. Pennsylvania is expected to be one of the most contested Senate races during the 2022 midterms. So Dr. Oz... Mm. Entering the political arena. So, I mean, recognizable name, certainly. He's got yes. that going for him. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Time certainly. will tell. Uh, bus stop forecast. Yeah, bus stop forecast. Kids heading out the door. Yeah. Ought to be bundled up this morning. Right. And by this point, the week feels like it's been going on forever because last week was a, a meager two days. So by the third day of this full week of school, it might be a tough one. Mostly cloudy skies. Uh, weather not tough, though. Easy day to handle. Sunrise at 723. A hair warmer this afternoon, but I am liking tomorrow, albeit it'll be uh, rain, it'll be a little bit breezy, but we still have highs around 50 degrees. Big changes we get into Friday, we drop the temperatures, Saturday, Sunday looking uh, like we could see some light snow showers, but next week, Mark, Monday and Wednesday, mm -hmm. Monday, the Bills game. Yeah, we talked about that earlier. Yeah, could be a snowy game maybe, uh, I'm thinking at Orchard Park. A little home field advantage against the Patriots. We'll see uh, how that one plays out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, in the meantime, that's it for us for now here on News 8 at Sunrise. Our next update 
is coming up in about a half an hour and 30 minutes. CBS Mornings is up next from New York. Have a great Wednesday this December 1st.